Crypto. Well, 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 welcome back. What we got going on today is being able to identify the central idea. So what am I learning? How to find a central idea. What something's mostly about. Why am I learning it? It'll help to make connections in my mind between this topic and other topics and enrich my way of reading and looking at things. And finally, how will I know I've, made, I've learned it? I'll be able to do the five finger uh, strategy on my own. I'll be, able to org I'll be able to write a TDA about it. We'll see a model of that. And I'll be able to read a passage out loud to myself and tell someone else what it's mostly about and teach someone else what it's mostly about. So what do we need to do? I've got to get this student, that's you, all the way across this river so that at the end of class, you should be able to read something and finish these two sentence starters without them posted anywhere in the room. And that is, this text was mostly about, you should be able to get finish that sentence starter with accuracy. And then three details that support the central idea are, be able to go over three different parts that support the central idea. Now let's just say something getting in the way today is that motivational dimension. All right, so this is a quote, God can't steer a parked car, but you guys are going to fill in the orange. So we need to say this out loud, say it out loud now for points. We're going to say it out loud. Remember, you're reading the underlined orange words out loud. Ready, set, go. God can't a Mr. Surface is giving out points right now, depending on your participation there. Now we're going to hold up a number one. Hold up a number one real quick. And you'll notice in number one that there's someone down here multitasking. She's got a million things going on, phone, computer, paper, schedules, things later. And look over here, we have some kids. One's looking at her phone. One's falling out of a seat. Someone's chewing on bubble gum. Another person is, is talking, right? And someone's playing basketball, flying in a paper airplane. Uh, that's multitasking, trying to do more than one thing at once, right? So is number one going to be a thing that might give you trouble today? Hold up a number two. Hold up a number two. Hold up a number two. All right? If you are experiencing big emotions, well, guess what? Then number two is you. Just too many big feelings to concentrate. And number three, hold up a number three. If you are so sleepy, Mr. Service has to remind you all the time to sort of be awake, well, you're a number three. Please take a moment now to hold up a number one, two, or three. Yes, indeed. Now, we're going to be taking notes and writing stuff down, and that's for a reason. All right, remember, you're going to be reading the orange. So you'll be reading neurons, you'll be reading fire better, and you'll be reading actively writing. All right, and I'm going to start. This is from the book Learning How to Learn. All right, write down as many ideas as you can. You'll find that your neurons... Right? So that's what you're going to say first. Write down as many ideas as you can. You'll find out that your <laughs> will. <laughs> and you'll remember more easily if your. <laughs> All right. That's part of that motivational dimension today, too. You've got to stay organized, see yourself as a learner, make a decision to be positive about it, and most importantly, make a decision to write down what it is you're doing today. All right? It'll help. Some cognitive dimensions when it comes to central idea. Hold up a number one. You're number one if you hear the word central idea and you have no idea on earth what anyone could be talking about. Number two is the problem today might be that you don't have enough time to finish the work in class. Will that be the issue? Number three, maybe you had a tough sixth grade or seventh grade year and coming up with the main idea is something you are out of practice for. All right, number one, two, and three. What's going to stop you from getting to these sentence starters at the end of class and being able to say them out loud after reading something? All right, what's going to give you that problem? Take the time to choose a one, two, or three now. Yes, beautiful song. So now, today, the strategic knowledge that we're going to bring into play involve the following things. Number one, hold up a number one. Does it help you as your strength reading something out loud to yourself and telling somebody what it was mostly about? If that's your strength, you're number one. Number two, 
just going around the room or reading an article and tracing your hand and writing down five details and then putting the main idea in the palm, right? Is that you? Is that something you're really strong with? Then you're number two. Number three, you're good with writing about central idea and organizing somebody else's thinking with either visuals or uh, an exemplar essay, right? If the foldable is your strength for this, you're a number three. And number four, when you're done reading something and you can tell who it's about and what about, uh, then you can find the main idea pretty well. And number four is where your strength is. Take a moment to hold up a one, two, three, or four. Where's your strength at? Yes, indeed. All right. And that's where we'll end with central idea. Again, we've got to get you across this river using strategic knowledge, using metacognition, discussion, rereading text, etc. And we've got to get you, the student, to be able at the end of class to say this text was mostly about and three details that support the central idea are. And of course, for those to be accurate. Thanks for your time. Go get them.